video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the calibration standard CSA to calibrate a protein CD spectrum, how to scale the spectrum to units of delta epsilons or molar ellipticity. Firstly I'll use the CD tool software and then repeat the operation using Excel. The CD spectrum of CSA or camphor sulfonic acid has two large peaks in the UV, one at 290 nanometers, the other at 192.5 nanometers. At 25 degrees centigrade, the absolute ellipticity of the 290 nanometer peak is 2.36 delta epsilons, and by convention, we take the absolute value of the lower wavelength peak to be minus 2 times this, um, minus 4.72 delta epsilons. To perform a calibration, we need to know the concentration of CSA in mg per mil, the sample cell path length, the molecular weight, and the values of the two CSA peaks in milli-degrees. Right, using control plus Z, we can zoom in on the 192 nanometer peak. The value can be seen in the bottom left hand corner of CD tool, and it's 39.3 milli-degrees. Remove the zoom by keying control plus R and zoom in on the 190 nanometer peak. The value is 20.4 milli-degrees. We calculate the theoretical value of the 290 nanometer peak as follows. Concentration in mg per mil times the literature delta epsilon value of 2.36 times the constant 32982 times the sample cell path length in centimetres. This is all divided by the molecular weight of CSA which is 232.3 grams per mole. In this case, the answer is 18.8 milliDegrees, compared to the experimental value of 20.4 milliDegrees. The theoretical 192 nanometer value is minus 37.6 milliDegrees, whereas the experimental value is 39.3 milliDegrees, giving us an experimental CSA peak ratio of 1.93 instead of 2. We need the calculated value divided by the experimental value at both wavelengths. Call these values R1 and R2. The calibration curve is derived from a second order polynomial that passes through these points. To create the curve, select Calibration tab and click on Create New Calibration Curve. Then enter the theoretical and experimental CSA peak values and click on OK. You can see the curve, but you can hide it for convenience, although it will remain active until a new curve is created or CD tool is shut down. Select the protein spectrum, then click on Calibrate by Polynomial. And here we have the CSA calibrated spectrum. To scale to delta epsilon, select the spectra tab and click on scale to delta epsilon. Enter the concentration, the sample cell path length, and the mean residue weight if you know it. If you don't, 110 is a good rule of thumb, and click OK. In the header, the units have been changed from milli-degrees to delta epsilon. The spectrum can be saved. If you require the spectrum to be in units of molar ellipticity, select the spectrum and go to the Spectra tab, scale CD signal and enter 3298.2. In the second part, I'll show you how to do all this in Excel. As I said earlier, the calibration curve is derived from a second order polynomial that passes through R1 and R2, where the R is the calibrated value over the experimental value. Create a scatter graph of R versus wavelength and add a second order polynomial trend line, remembering to check display equation on chart. This is the equation we require. In another spreadsheet, the wavelength and CD values of the protein spectrum to be calibrated have been pasted into columns A and B. In the third column C, create a calibration curve using the polynomial equation substituting column A for X. 
Multiply the original spectrum in column B by the calibration curve in column C to produce a CSA calibrated spectrum. To scale to delta epsilons, we multiply the spectrum in column D by the mean residue weight. And this is divided by the protein concentration times 32982 times the sample cell path length. If you require the spectrum in units of molar ellipticity, leave out the constant 32982. So here we have the original, the CSA calibrated and the normalized spectrum.